Hey guys, it's YouTube Pollution here with my top 10 gadgets of 2009. I'm grading these gadgets based on how revolutionary they were, how innovative they were, and what the overall quality of the product was. Let's get started. Starting at number 10, we have the Dell Agdamo XPS. You may remember the MacBook Air, released late 2007. It previously held the title of the world's thinnest notebook, but that title has moved over to the Adamo. Weighing in at 3.2 pounds and only 0.41 inches thick, the Adamo XPS is truly ultra portable. Number 9 is the Motorola Droid. You may remember those anti-iPhone ads back in September of 2009 about the Droid. That certainly was not the best decision on Verizon Wireless's part, since they are supposed to be the next carrier of the iPhone after AT&T's contract with Apple is over. Although I haven't had a chance to get my hands on a Droid, it's still a great buy based on the specifications. A 3.7 inch capacitive touchscreen, a physical keyboard that slides out, and being as thin or almost thinner than the iPhone 3GS. The Droid runs Google's Android mobile operating system, which is probably the best operating system out there for mobile devices other than Apple's OS X Mobile. Google also includes a free navigation app, no subscription, and you don't have to pay for it the first time you download. It also includes voice guided directions. Because of the Android operating system, the Droid has some serious potential in the future, although there have been several reports of very short battery life, going down to two hours. At number eight, we have Apple's Magic Mouse. The company first introduced multi-touch technology on its iPhone in late 2007. It then brought that technology over to the MacBook line in 2008. I guess there was such a high demand for this technology that they decided to replace their old Mighty Mouse with the Magic Mouse. The Magic Mouse is basically one large button. It incorporates all the multi-touch gestures that we know from OS X. Some people still side with Apple's old Mighty Mouse, which doesn't have any multi-touch technology at all, but does have the traditional side buttons you find in a normal mouse. Moving on to number six is the Power Mac. The guys that designed the Power Mac decided that our old wired technology for charging wasn't enough. They decided to make every device be able to charge wirelessly. Power Mat is basically a magnetic pad. It comes with a case for almost any device you can think of. You just set the device in the case and then set that case on top of the Power Mat and it'll charge. Number five is possibly the best mobile device out there, the Google Nexus One. With a one gigahertz CPU and 512 megabytes of RAM, those are the same specs as this 15.4 inch Dell laptop. The Nexus One is only 0.45 inches thick and only weighs 4.6 ounces. The Nexus One also includes Android 2.2, which is the newest release of the Android OS from Google. 2.2 includes multi-touch technology, which makes this a definite comparison to the iPhone. Number four is Microsoft's Zune HD. The release of the Zune HD really surprised the world. Not in that we didn't see it coming, but that Microsoft actually did something right. The device currently has the best touch screen on any mobile device as far as clarity and touch precision. The Zune HD can definitely be compared to the iPod Touch. The problem with that is, the iPod Touch has an app store with thousands of apps. The Zune HD doesn't support third-party apps, so only supported companies can produce apps for the Zune HD. Apps aside, the Zune could definitely beat the iPod Touch, with its vivid screen and amazing movie playback. Number three is another product from our beloved company Microsoft, Windows 7. Some people actually refused to upgrade to Vista. They stayed with XP. By the time Windows 7 came out, XP was vastly outdated. Luckily, now that it's here, Windows 7 is a great improvement over both OS's. Windows 7 is almost entirely 64-bit, which is a refreshing relief from Windows XP. Windows 7 has several great features, although most of them are under the hood. They did add a improved user interface. It's really not much of an improvement, other than it's basically Vista, that doesn't suck so much RAM. Although I'm clearly not a Microsoft fan, I have to give Windows 7 number three on this list, because at least it relieved us from Vista. Number two is the Amazon Kindle. Now the Kindle pretty much defined the ebook industry, sort of what like the iPod defined the MP3 industry. It was the first device to really have a very long lasting battery life combined with a special screen designed for reading text. Several ebook readers came before the Kindle, but the Kindle was the only one that really ever caught on. Kindle is a very nice device, but the Barnes & Noble Nook, which came out this year, is definitely some serious competition. You probably guessed it, my number one gadget of 2009 is the iPhone 3GS. Not just the 3GS model, the entire iPhone has redefined what we think of as mobile phones. The iPhone 3GS model, which was released in 2009, includes many improvements such as a 3 megapixel video camera and internet tethering with your laptop. This means that you can connect to the internet anywhere using your computer with iPhone's 3G network. The problem with this is AT&T doesn't allow it inside the US, so you have to be outside 
in order to use this feature. Although I told myself I wouldn't put an Apple product at the beginning of this list, I think the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone overall definitely deserves to be the most innovative and most revolutionary gadget of this past decade. Well that's it folks, this has been YouTube Pollution with my top 10 gadgets of 2009. See you later.